hello again. Well, I'm out at it again, walking along the middle fork of the Snoqualmie River, just east of North Bend, Washington. It's a great little area. I've been exploring it for the last few days, finding places to paint. So I'm out getting a little exercise, enjoying this sunlight. We've had a couple weeks of wildfire smoke and then a couple weeks of heavy rain. And now it's beautiful weather, but just a little bit of very high altitude wildfire smoke, which is actually kind of interesting. It's not making the air too bad to breathe, but it's kind of giving a red tinge to everything. It's high enough in the atmosphere that it's not really affecting the air quality, especially here in the woods. I think the wildfire smoke is mostly from California, maybe a little bit still from Oregon. This is the Mine Creek day use area. It takes you right down on the river. It's a very pretty, clean, clear, wide river. It's a warm day. It's almost 80 degrees here, which is warm for Washington State, the West Coast. Temperature drops almost immediately when you get into the forest. It's kind of humid today. Lots of fog early in the morning, but the air's refreshing now. Lots of beautiful places to set up and paint here on the river. So part of what I do when I go and explore is just hike and scope out places to paint. Like this little gravel bar with a nice view down the river. This would actually be a pretty fascinating place in the evening. The sun would set that direction, that's west. Nice tree over there with some fall color. Great place to set up and paint right beside the river. Nice pattern of rocks in the river. Lots of different colors. And that hillside beyond is just starting to develop some fall color. So in the next sunny, clear day, I may come here either early or late. For the middle of the day, I think this is gonna get kinda of hammered by the sunlight. It'd be a little bit of a rough place to be painting during the middle of the day. So I'm gonna keep walking. I was just listening to the Plain Air podcast. This is Eric Rhodes' podcast. He interviews some wonderful artists on their technique and their mindset and their tools. He was talking to an artist, Carolyn Anderson. I hadn't come across her before. Beautiful art, check her out on the internet. But she was talking about how when she looks at a scene, she tries to soften her eyes a little bit so that she doesn't have as many hard edges. She was talking a little bit about the human science of eyesight, where the point of focus in your natural vision is tiny. It's like the size of your thumbnail when you hold your arm out in front of you. The rest is very blurry soft peripheral vision so she said to capture that she softens her eyes she looks at a scene and determines her composition and then she looks at it with soft eyes trying to just relax stop looking hard at anything and just take in the the view and then paint based on that so i'm gonna try that today that sounds interesting beautiful trail beautiful day just to be walking through the forest every shade of green 
you could imagine. And I love seeing the fall color starting to come out. The whole landscape is just kind of taking on a reddish gold, kind of a cadmium yellow hint to it. Coming up on the river here, you can hear it. And now you can see it. Oh, this looks promising. That's a beautiful old tree. This little sandy beach looks promising. It's north facing, so I should be in the shade for most of the afternoon. That way is west. Beautiful trees across the river there on the bank. And that way is kind of northeast. I think I'll sit up right here and paint this direction. I'm immediately drawn to those rocks in the river and that wall of trees on the opposite side of the river. Some fall colors starting to come out. If I kind of zoom in, kind of focus in on those rocks and just kind of blur out that far bank of trees, that might be interesting. Might be an interesting way for me to play with that idea I heard on the podcast keep my edges really soft so I think I'll get set up and figure out my composition and get started I think it'll be nice too because the Sun is going to sweep out a little bit here and light up more of those rocks especially that bluish tinted rock right in the middle of the river there should be fun Thanks so much for joining me. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Here I'm having a little cup of coffee and taking a few pictures on my iPhone. I use a little trick on my iPhone to play with the composition. I rotate it, landscape and portrait, and then when I crop it, I take a screenshot with the one-third lines on the picture and then that helps me to do the initial sketch and helps me to get an image of what I'm seeing out in nature onto my panel. Once I have that in initial sketch in then I ignore the photo on my iPhone unless of course the scene changes so much like if fog rolls in or if I happen to catch a, a light effect that I really want to get in my painting then I might look at the iPhone photo again to get that detail. But the phone doesn't get good color. The phone does a nice job, especially with detail. But as far as color goes, it tends to just kind of flatten things out. Well, I have to tell you, what a beautiful place. I wish you were here with me. It just feels lovely here. It's quiet, except for the sound of the river and an occasional plane flying overhead. Um, really pleasant day. Well I've got the sketch in on my panel. It's a 9 by 12 panel. I'm going with a landscape format. I've mostly erased the one-third lines. I've got this big boulder. So this boulder here is going to take up a large portion of the composition. Right now, I, I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure how I like that. Um, it looked pretty good when I was playing on the phone, but on the panel it looks huge. But we'll see. We'll, we'll get into it. I can always adjust later and shrink it down and include more of the river. I've got the river bank in the background, and I really want to keep that loose. I want to just kind of hint at the foliage. 
if I look at that boulder, which is going to be the center of interest, and soften my eyes, then that background bank becomes kind of a middle dark green with some orange highlights, not much detail. So I'm gonna try to try to accomplish that in this painting. We'll see how it goes. I've got my normal colors laid out here. Yellow ochre, Windsor Newton lemon, cad yellow, cad red, lizard and crimson, burnt sienna, burnt umber, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, titanium white, a little bit of liquid, and turpentine. I'll start with a turpentine wash where I'll just kind of lay in the tones out in the scene. Beautiful fall colors. I'm seeing a lot of cad yellow and some burnt sienna. So I think I'll go with that. With maybe some burnt umber with the cad yellow in the river. Lots of greens, lots of blues as well, but for the underpainting, I like to go with a warmer and lighter value initial wash. It just tends to work a little better for my landscape paintings. Washman. Now I'll take my brush with a little bit of turpentine on it and wipe away the lightest lights in the scene. see the scene is staying pretty consistent so far. The sun is creeping around the corner. I might end up in the sun and I might have to move back a little bit to stay in the shade. But so far so good.
right, I've got the lightest lights wiped away. That boulder is definitely the center of interest. I hinted at a little bit of the blue there, and I'll bump that up a little bit more as I now paint the final colors. So I'll start to mix the colors. I'll work from the back to the forward and darkest to lighter. This foreground is now in the light. It started out in the shadow, so I need to make a decision whether I'm going to put it in the light or keep it in the shadow.
I don't know if it's coming through on the camera, but in the shadows on the water, especially where the shadow is under the water, it's reflecting the sky that's directly above the river, which is kind of a deep purple blue. So I'm getting, when I look, especially when I focus right on that big rock and kind of let my eyes go soft and I just take in the periphery, I get a glowing lavender, kind of a darker lavender, somewhere almost on the edge of ultramarine blue, but with just a hint of alizarin crimson and cerulean blue. So just the it's a really hard to describe light lavender. So what I'm doing now is putting in some of that electric lavender in those shadows in the water. A light shade and a dark shade. And then I'll fill the rest of it in with that muddy sap green with a little bit of cad yellow, a little bit of burnt umber. Well, I got finished, finished up the painting. Had a great time this afternoon painting here beside Snoqualmie Middle Fork River. Let me show you the painting. You can see the lights changed quite a bit. I had to move the painting back a little bit to kind of stay in the shade. It's in partial sun now. That's the end result. The center of interest is certainly that rock, it's really jumping out against that green water. And I do like how loose the background tree line is. And those stones, just some hints of yellow and blue. I'm still kind of undecided on this front rock. I'm gonna take it back to the studio, set it aside for a little bit, and then take a look at it again, and take a look at the video and the, the footage. 
and see how, how, how I want to handle it. I may just leave it pretty rough and but darken it so that it recedes into the shadow. But I'll take a look and put it out on the internet. I'll also take a look again at some of the detail and make sure that that center of interest, the boulder there in the stream, is convincing. Right now it, it almost looks like it's a cutout pasted on there. So I need to work a little bit, I need to work some of the edges a little bit to get it to sit in the river, be a little bit more three-dimensional. Such a nice day, nice fall day out here on the river. I really enjoyed it. There's just scenes to paint everywhere you look. It's a beautiful world we live in. I hope we can keep some wild places like this beautiful. It's so restorative and healing to come and spend time in a place like this. For me, it really energizes me and fixes what ails me. Thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate you tuning in. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the trail.